Hello, I'm CS Steve here with Matt Cooper, and uh, we're here to talk about Here's the Storm. It's a pretty fun game, I would say. So I'm just going to jump right into it. There's been a lot of changes that have happened to Talents recently, and one of the biggest ones for people that have been playing is Nova. That was a really, really big change, and some people consider it a little bit too strong. Now, today, here, we've had a couple of changes that have already gone into effect. Uh, how did you guys arrive to the way that you've changed things around? Like, we, we saw a massive change in Nova, like, literally playstyle changing builds. And now we're kind of looking at it, scaling it back, doing number tweaks. How do you guys arrive at those numbers, and what's your process through that? Sure. So the, the talent system is one of those systems that... Uh, we're always going to be working on, right? Like, um, and hopefully, when we do like a Nova rework, we we get it right, and we can kind of move on to an, another character. But for Nova, there there are some tuning things. Um, so that's I wouldn't say that's outside of the town rework, but it's not like, you know, we we wanted her to come in back balanced. She's she's doing a little bit too much damage right now. I guess you've seen some of the changes probably here that we've done to reduce some of her damage output. Um, but for some of that, we weren't um, we weren't super happy with Nova's playstyle. Like she was kind of a hybrid between auto attacks and spells, and you could kind of build her either way. But it was probably correct to build her to do more snipe damage. Um, so we kind of wanted to focus her play style a little bit. Like, uh, her trait is cloaking, right? So it, that already kind of tells you you should be going in and out of combat. You shouldn't be staying in combat like a Vala, for example. Right. We wanted to separate her from Vala a lot more. Um, so that was kind of the the core focus behind the talent rework. You know, there was a little bit of we don't really see her in competitive play, and her, her numbers were OK, but that wasn't really the, the main reason for us doing that. Um, for there, it was, you know, looking at you know, new talents and talents we could really beef up to to really sell that fantasy of, you know, being more of like a burst sniper. Yeah, being a sniper. Exactly, yeah. Okay, I'll take this back. Um, so we have that, uh, we have the, the hero balance like that, but then there's certain talents in the game that a lot of people say are kind of generic, we'll, we'll call it. Yeah. And now, I don't, I'm not really a fan of that term, but it's they're across a couple of things, so it's fine. Now, resurgence is something that is hot, hot topic all the time. It's literally on everyone's mind. So now here we have a change. Before it was two minutes, now it's three. We've seen it here today. Uh, I've, I've gotten to experience it firsthand. It feels a little bit better, I'll be, I'll be honest. Uh, so with all the feedback that the community has given you, how did you say, okay, you know what, we, did you say like we need to change this or was it something that you kind of arrived on your own while just looking at games and seeing how the competitive scene kind of did its thing? What's, what went into this change for the extra minute added on? Uh, yeah, for Resurgence, I think it was a combination of things. Like, um, early on when we put Resurgence into the game, we were actually worried that people wouldn't pick this up because it was, you know, on Uther, he can choose between Resurgence or making his Divine Storm gigantic. And, you know, for us, that was that was almost a non-choice in a lot of our playtests. Like, you would just always go for the killing power. Um, so we were actually a little scared people wouldn't pick up Resurgence. At, you know, a two-minute cooldown, it's very, very powerful for what it does. But we thought it almost had to be that powerful. Um, obviously, watching a lot of the you know the pro players seeing you know our internal statistics and stuff like that we realized that resurgence was a little bit of a problem but mostly we um we weren't too happy with the gameplay of being able players to be able to play you know a little bit too risky and know that they have a free get out of jail card and it seemed like every other team fight the whole team would be coming back if they picked a certain team comp um so i'd say our our change from two to three minutes is a little bit of um almost a band-aid like we we don't think that's the final change we want to make to resurgence we feel like that that was an easy change that um you know our qa team didn't have to spend a lot of time vetting and we know it would kind of go over well with what the community wanted um but we're going to be looking to maybe do more stuff with resurgence in the future all right, so like you said, that's a Band-Aid fix, right? It's something that's not necessarily final by any means. So what are the other options going to that? Are we, are we thinking about penalties for death if you take resurgence? Like you have to say you lose a, a chunk of experience or some, like your next death maybe is a little, little, little like elongated. Like you kind of cut half the time off it and adds it onto your next one. Something like that to kind of offset the, the fact that you can literally just like die and come right back. So what's, is there any stuff for that on the way, or is that even an idea for you? 
yeah, I mean, we're, we're kind of talking about a lot of different things right now. Um, you know, there's a, there's a few tuning knobs on Resurgence without changing the core functionality, and that's, you know, the cooldown of it, but also how quickly you respawn when your Resurgence kicks in. I think it's five seconds right now. So that is a tuning knob where we, we could say, you know, it takes off half your death timer when it kicks in. It respawns you after 15 seconds. Like, there's a little bit of tuning there. Um, you kind of touched on this a little bit earlier when you mentioned the generic talents, and we, we kind of view them like that, too. Like, Burning Rage is a generic talent that multiple characters have, and it kind of works on them. But every once in a while, we take one of those generic talents and we kind of customize it to the hero. Um, so we're talking about maybe doing that for Resurgence also, like maybe um, different characters will have different um, different uh, uses for Resurgence and it won't be consistent across the board. So it'll be harder to build a whole team around Resurgence, but we're, we're still kind of discussing a lot of this. Um, I'm going to actually segue that into something that Reddit was talking about last night. Um, so Thrall came out, it's one of the heroes that we've announced here, and he has Resurgence, now he's a shaman. Reincarnate is something that they have. It's a really big thing in PvP. And they were saying that basically Resurgence should work kind of like Reincarnate. Like, you can take the level 20 talent and you can choose to activate it if you want, or you can just kind of leave it on the end. And now, that's been a topic that's been brought up a lot of times, and many people immediately say that's way too strong. Like, if you can pick and choose your times when you can come back, that, that, that defeats the purpose of a death. So, I mean, those things are there, and I'm just going to kind of segue this away from Resurgence because we've talked about it enough. But... You said that there's certain generic talents that are kind of getting moved over towards individual heroes. I mean, Jaina has improved Ice Block, so that's something that we haven't seen before. It's the three second uh, invulnerability, and then it switches to chill targets when it expires, so like, that's a really cool thing. Is that something that you're moving forward to for all heroes? It's, is that like the end goal? You want to have everything be very personal to each hero? Is that the, the goal here? Um, not really. I, I think, so generic talents are good because they just, you know, there's something that we can put on a lot of heroes, and the fans aren't going to give, give us uh, flack when, you know, six heroes have burning range. That's basically burning range, right? Um, so a lot of what we're doing with those, uh, those generic talents that we're customizing, um, there's some lore stuff there, like Jaina's a frost mage, right. so why doesn't she have ice block? And you know, um, uh, who's a Rhaegar had farsight instead of clairvoyance, and it's a little bit different. So that's kind of something we do. Um, we started doing it early on when we it just kind of made sense from a lore perspective. Like um, it allowed us to get kind of more of the the core kit, the core fantasy of that character into the game that didn't make sense in the core abilities. Um, Tyrande had searing arrows instead of searing attack or whatever because it was like oh war three right and we can tune it differently which is also pretty cool um i'm not sure we'll get to a place where we move completely away from generics but in some cases maybe resurgence being an example that might be a case where we don't want to have resurgence but we do some custom ones that we're more happy with okay yeah that's a pretty good answer that's kind of what we're looking for um so segueing into actually being um, diverse in every talent. A lot of people say that because Heroes is so so unique with the talent system, that in other games you have items that you buy and they're just generic across the board. It's just the way that it kind of enhances the hero that their character, whatever they're playing. When you look at Heroes now, Thrall, Jaina, uh, Lost Vikings, all those are just crazy. Like they, You look at the current heroes and they're, they're wildly different. Rhaegar is the same kind of idea. Um, the first time Rhaegar hit the game, everyone was like, this. This is how talent should be. This feels so right. And I've, I mean, I've gotten the chance to play them here today, and that, that's the exact way I feel about this. Like, I, there's got to be at least four different viable builds per hero, and that's amazing. So I'm guessing that's what you're aiming for, but is that something that is like the actual goal now going forward? Because you have, you guys had enough time to really look at talents and say, okay, this works, this doesn't. Let's try to make it as as good as we can. Is that the goal? Uh, yeah, I mean, so uh, a lot with the talent system, it was it was a learning process for us, right? Like um, about a year ago, I guess. So technical alpha came what February or March, so, er, early year, right? So end of last year we were still moving between different talent systems and we had um the core talent system we had for a while was mostly a stat based system so you um it was still custom per hero but you were picking up um your burning rage gave you plus 500 health you know and stuff like that um and then we found you know i, I won't go into too much detail about it but we found a lot of people were picking the the talents just based off the stats like i want to build a tank so i'm gonna pick everything that has plus health on it there's a lot of different problems um 
So early on, basically, when Technical Alpha first came out, that was like, we, we found the talent system we wanted to do, but we crammed all that in, you know, pretty quickly. It was like, okay, just get stuff that's good enough, get stuff that's, that's good enough, right? And as we, um, we did more and more heroes, we kind of learned um, how to make fun builds or, you know, what is too much synergy. I think we found there's, Nova had a little bit too much synergy with, with some of her reworks. Um, so I think Rhaegar, we're all actually, um, that's a hero we cite internally too. Like we're really happy because, you know, if you're doing a lightning shield build, you might pick up a totem talent or a, you know, a healing talent because there's some, you know, synergies in between abilities and stuff like that. So I think that's definitely, um, you know, Rhaegar, I think Thrall and Jaina, like you said, they, they're, kind of where we're at um, on the town system too. And that's something we want to kind of start doing across the board. Um, so I think it's just, you know, we, we learned a lot about making that system work and we're also going to try and go back and revisit more heroes like Nova. Okay. So there's a really big buzz right now about Lily, and she is the thing that everyone's like, okay, like, we get it. She's supposed to be kind of just the easy, like you just press buttons. That's it. That's the whole game. And now a lot of people are saying that she's almost just not worth playing. She's at a pretty bad situation in competitive play. She just doesn't see play. And there's a talk of reworks. Is there anything we can talk about for this? Is there any little thing we can get out of this for Lily? Uh, yeah, I, I mean, I can talk about it a little bit. Like Lily, she is. Um, out of all our support characters, she's the one who probably needs a rework the most. Um, so she is one character right now that we are changing some of stuff up in, internally. Um, we haven't touched her core kit too much. It's mostly with talents, so we're we're trying to see what we can do there, um, and we're trying to see like um, how big of changes we should be making. Like, do we need do we need to get art involved? Like, if we're doing stuff beyond number tweaks, then um, so hopefully we'll have something to share more with her like early next year. So Blizzard, um, they they really like to move away from the buzzword being illusion of choice. Like, you don't want to have just so many talents that seem like they're good, but they all do kind of the same thing. I mean, we've seen it in WoW. We went from a massive 70 point system to seven choices now. And when I look at heroes, I kind of see the same thing. It's it's not overly complex, but at the same time, it gives you enough options to really diversify your play style. And I think that's one of the biggest things that a lot of people are looking for. They're, they're looking for ways to say, okay, I know the base kit. How can I make this be my own thing? And is that something that you guys aim for when you go for hero design? Or is it just, we just want to make a really good hero and see how people play it afterwards? Uh, it's a combination. I think it, it, it almost depends which character we're working on. Um, and as we're learning more about it, um, I think recently if the talent system, like we've, especially if our Nova reworks and stuff like that, we're kind of, we feel like the, the way the talents work with part of the hero kit, we feel like that's, um, that's more part of the hero design almost because, um, we've talked about not changing, you know, the hero too much. We don't want to give, you know, Nova an escape option because that's not really, you know, part of her hero kit is she doesn't have an escape option. Um, she, so we didn't want to give her like sprint, even though that would be, you know, sprint would be a great talent on her and people would, would love that, but it just, it kind of filled, it would fill a, um, a core weakness that we kind of don't want to fill with talents. Uh, it's definitely, um, I think we try and make a generally good hero, but we're also looking to see how that hero fits into like a team composition. Like something we talk about when we're working on new heroes, like what does this hero do that's different from other characters, right? Like if we're making a uh, slow moving tank, um, immediately we're thinking of Arthas, for example, because you know he doesn't have a, a dash or anything like that, but he's gonna kind of slow you down as he moves. Um, so we're trying to make sure that we're not just, you know, rebranding a hero with, you know, the same abilities. So, when it comes to maps, do you ever take into consideration the current hero pool or potentially the uh, evolving hero pool and the way that you de design a map? Is it, do you ever look and say, okay, Hammer would be really good here and we can, we can design a map where this character would really shine or like dying a bajillion times is murky, doesn't matter because of the way that this map works. Is there anything that, like that that goes into play when you do map design? Um, not, not so much yet. Like we're definitely, when we're, when we're making a map, it's more, we're trying to create a different, um, gameplay experience. So with Sky Temple, it's kind of a combination of like Garden of Terror, where, or sorry, not Garden of Terror, um, Dragonshire, where you're capturing points and Blackheart's Bay, where you're sieging towns. Um, we do think about how characters are going to play on that map. Um, like. Uh, early on, we'll run into some problems where there's some, you know, crannies and nooks where Sergeant Hammer can siege like two of your your back towns from one location, and the team just focuses on defending that one point. We we you know that's a problem for us, but um, we don't. 
so far we haven't come into this saying like we really want to make a cool map that you know Abathur and Murky would be a great combination on, but we might get to that point eventually. So it, it sounds like you're saying that maps are just kind of like the first thing and then heroes sort of just fall into place. Okay. Um, so I'm going to jump back really quick to entirely game-changing things, and we're going to talk about Illidan. And Illidan is one of the heroes that, previous to pretty much yesterday, um, a lot of people didn't really feel like he was extremely viable or even viable at all. And then we saw him in three matches this weekend out of four, and he he did some work. So... When it comes to making the decision to make such a big rework, I mean, you have to change art assets, you have to do all kinds of goodies. How does it, how does it come down the line and say, okay, like this has to happen? And I know I know people said that it didn't feel right at first, um, but like what what was the decision to say, okay, it's time to switch this? And how did you kind of follow up through that? Um, yeah, the Illidan design, we weren't entirely happy with the kit, I guess. Like we we put it out and pretty quickly playing it, you know, out in the wild with people we. We said, you know, we can do better. So I, I think that was kind of the core. Um, it wasn't so much like his win percentage. Like he was actually pretty powerful in his first iteration, but um, it just it wasn't really the the gameplay we were going for. Um, I know uh, Kent Eric, who was the game designer working on Illidan, um, he really wanted to get more of that Legolas vibe from like uh, Lord of the Rings, where you see him um, jumping through the barrels, you know, through that river scene and stuff like that. And he thought, hey, that's that's who Illidan should be, and that's that's different than Zero Tool, and that's different than other characters. Um, so that's kind of you know what we tried to do with the rework. When it comes to character design, how does it come down the line? Like, how? What's next? What is it? Just like a okay, this character would be cool to put in the game, and then it just kind of goes down the line. Or do you have a way of saying like, we need this type of character in the game? Like, we're, we're missing X role. Do we have to like fill that immediately, or is it just whatever feels natural? Uh, kind of a combination. Like, we have we have a big list of characters we we do want to see in Heroes of the Storm, and hopefully we can get to them all. You know, one day. Um, but then we are looking at, do we need more warriors? Do we need more range characters? Do we need more supports? Maybe we need more female warriors or, or whatever. Um, so then we're trying to see who in that list might fit that. We also don't want to release, you know, five assassins in a row. We want to have a mixture so that, you know, if you come back and there's two new heroes to Heroes of the Storm, hopefully they're, one of them will fit kind of a play style you like. You know, we're also looking for uh, characters that do something different, right? Like if, we, if we're if we releasing Jaina, who's, you know, a frost mage, you know, we might want to do something a little different for our next character. Um, so it's kind of a combination of everything. And there's, you know, different groups are kind of looking for different things like the the art staff I know they look for different uh, silhouettes right we do a lot of um, I'm gonna butcher this but I think we call them bipeds where it's like you know two-legged characters who stand upright but they want to see you know more like you know a monster character like a Zagar or something like that so they also kind of have like some things they would like to see um, so it's it's a lot of different things when we're trying to figure out which heroes next but uh, yeah big list of them okay. we're here at BlizzCon and Overwatch just got announced it's a pretty big game now when it comes to heroes, it's it's the mashup, right? It's it's got all kinds of stuff from all different IPs. We just saw Lost Vikings get added, like crazy awesome stuff. But when you're when you're making heroes and you're making other games at Blizzard, is there any kind of cross pollination between teams? Do they sit down and say, Hey, like now that we have all this stuff, are we is there any working together? How does it work for hero design in that regard? Sure. So I, when we're working on like a hero from you know Diablo or um, obviously from StarCraft, you know it's the same team. But um, from say Warcraft, we are we are talking to those guys, um, you know, messaging designers or artists on their team and saying, you know, what's a really iconic character we should be looking to do, or like, hey, we're looking to do um, Sonya, you know, the barbarian from Diablo Three. Like, what what kind of core abilities do players really gravitate towards? And they'll you know they'll send us stats of like, well, people you know mostly funnel down these builds or or whatever and we try and um, we try and really hit those um, but then it's also we you know we put it out in a internal build and we get people around the company to play it and they'll give us feedback and you know the Diablo guys are gonna play Sonya or, or one of the other Diablo characters and give us feedback on how you know that is hitting their what they see that character doing or not for for overwatch um you know obviously we you know blizzard just announced this um for heroes we're still looking to fill out a huge roster of characters from starcraft warcraft diablo so we're not looking at doing any overwatch characters at this time um it's something we're excited about doing maybe in the future um but nothing to announce yet so you have your options. We have all kinds of talents that we've seen today, um, and the game's developing wonderfully. 
uh, that's it for me. I mean, I'm, I'm happy to talk to you. I'm really thankful that we got this interview. So thank you for everything. And uh, that's it. I mean, do you have any last words you want to shout out to anybody? Uh, not so much shout out, but uh, I guess to the fans, like we, you know, we're, we do read forums. We do look at, you know, what you guys post and, you know, we're looking at all the feedback. So um, keep sending it and hopefully we can, you know, keep opening up the game to more and more people soon. Okay, cool. Thanks for your time. Thank you.